Great crew tonight. We're going to get jumping in here. This is our last live webinar of this year. So welcome to our final webinar and welcome to it. Uh, we're going to talk to you about a few things, give you a few announcements. We're going to talk about 2025, the year of opportunity. So that's what we're going to be hitting today. Good to see you. Hi, Connie. Love to see your greeting today. Hi, Kristen. Good to see you. Welcome, Marina from Germany. Great crew tonight. So let's get going. Let's get going. I have a couple of great announcements for you and a couple of opportunities for you as well. But this is going to be a year of opportunity. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Yep, I got my Eagle shirt on, Helen. <laughs> let's hope for a good postseason. They've had a good season. So all right, let's pray. Father, thank you in Jesus' name that where two or more agree is touching one thing, it is done. So tonight, we're going to agree that there, we are going to see things move today. Mountains move. We're going to seize moments of change. And God, I thank you in Jesus' name that you're going to speak through your eternal word, through your scripture, and also that you're going to speak your rhema word tonight in Jesus' name. So God, I thank you for that. We, we say everywhere we set our foot is ours. So we say this territory is ours. We speak over this internet over every connection. We speak over every chat in Jesus' name that your spirit is prevalent in Jesus' name. Welcome, guys. Welcome, guys. Good to see you all online tonight. So welcome to our final webinar of 2024, December webinar. Today, we're going to talk about next year. Let's get ready for next year. We're calling it the year of opportunity, 2025 the year of opportunity. And I love that word because opportunity is something that is, is potential and something that's positive, number one. So it's an opportunity for each of us. And, and think about it. There are times whenever we, we miss opportunities. I can remember when I was making a transition in life from high school to college. And I, I missed some opportunities that I didn't know that, was a, that were available, but I actually see some opportunities that I knew were available. And that's what I want to talk about because I believe there's more available to you than you know. But I remember having a talk with God one day in my room. I was graduating high school and I said, God, if I go to college, I'm going to need two things. I'm going to need a car and I'm going to need a job. And I remember saying to the Lord, I have $50 in my bank account. That's what I have. But I need a car and a job and I, I need that to get to college. So I remember sowing a seed of $50 and saying, God, I'm believing you for a car and a job. And I had both of those actually within a week. Within a week, my brother-in-law came to me and said, you're going to need a car for college. And I have an old car that's sitting in my yard. It just needs to do have some work done on it. And for $350, we did that work together, had some good bro time, and I had a car. And also within that same week, my my current employer where I was working in the mall came to me and said, you're going to need a job when you go to college. And I'm going to call the owner of this same store that's in the town where your job is and tell him that you need, he needs to hire you. So there were things that I needed that I was aware of that I had an opportunity for. And if I hadn't prayed the prayer, if I hadn't asked, I wouldn't received it. But here's, here's the thing. There were things that I needed I didn't know I needed. There, were, there was actually more available to me. And I remember my, after my first semester of college, I was called into the dean's office, or the, I think it was the bursar's office, the guy who handles the money, and he said, you, aren't, you haven't paid up your full semester bill, and you can't register for next semester until you pay for next the last semester. And I said, look, I did everything I could. I, I had a job, and I took care of things, but I, I don't have the money. And he said, well, did you apply for this scholarship? Did you apply for this grant? Did you apply for these things? And he, I said, no, I didn't know they were available. He said, well, here's the applications. You can apply now. It's not too late. And also, I went home for my, my break over the holiday, and I went back to my old employer, and he worked me over the break, and he said, did you know that there is a scholarship available for people that have worked at this job? It was Chick-fil-A. So he said, if you work for two years through high school, there's a scholarship available for you for college. Here's the application. So I want to tell you, this is a story I want you to take right now, that there are things that you know are available for you that you haven't gotten yet, you haven't taken a hold of, spiritual things, financial things, breakthrough moments, healings, but there are also things you're not 
you don't know are available for you. So that's what we're going to do tonight is we are going to make you aware of what's available for you. This is a year of opportunity. Someone say, I'm going to seize my opportunity. And this is a biblical idea. Opportunities are biblical things because they're in the in biblical language. There's two words for moments or times, and that's chronos and kairos. You know, chronos means like the ticking of the clock and kairos means the moment of the chime, if you will. It's, 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 the, it's the seized opportunity. It sometimes is called the fullness of time in the Bible, or it's called a kairos moment. So I want to tell you that clock, the clock has been tip, ticking, but I want to also tell you that it's time. There's an alarm that's going to go off for you today so you know what's available to you. So let's take, we're going to look at a couple of scriptures to talk about this opportunity. Someone say, I'm gonna, this is my Kairos moment. That word Kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S, is really unique to the Greek language because it's it's when chronos time and opportune moments come together. It's called a fullness of time. And we see those. There's actually 12 moments in old covenant stories that are considered Kairos moments where Everything shifted in one moment. It was, had happened at creation. It happened when God spoke to Abram. It happened to Moses. And it happened in this scripture we're going to talk about. In 1 Samuel chapter 16. This is the Kairos moment, the opportune moment where David was anointed as king. But I want to tell you that that moment was almost missed. And we're going to learn something from an almost missed moment. So we're gonna talk about one of my favorite guys in the entire Bible, Samuel. Samuel, the prototypical prophet. Samuel, the first judge. Samuel, who kind of spanned the, um, the three offices that Jesus was prophet, priest, and king. So Samuel was a priest, he served in the temple. He was a judge, so he was a kingly or governmental figure and he was a prophet. And so we don't see many people stepping into those roles that way, but we do see Samuel do it. And we're gonna take a look at some of the things that happened in Samuel's life. So you look at 1 Samuel chapter 16, first of all, and this is when God comes to Samuel and, and said, I want you to anoint another king, but there's some things that we have to learn from this story. So it says, so it was that when they came he looked at Eliab. So Samuel is standing before Jesse's sons. And the first one, the oldest one, is Eliab. And he's standing in front of him. And he says to himself, surely the Lord's anointed is before me. But the Lord spoke to Samuel and said, do not look at his appearance or his physical stature. That's a really important word. Because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Now, this is a very important moment because Samuel is kind of, like I said, our prototypical prophet. And we're going to see a relation between a relationship between uh, Samuel and the kingdom. We're going to talk about how this scripture comes together with prophecies about Jesus, because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So Samuel is at an opportune moment where he's about to anoint a king. Now, let's rewind back in Samuel's life and let's talk about his preparation a little bit. Samuel was a miracle because his mother, uh, Hannah, was barren. And we see two times in the history of the Bible story where there is a, a dark period where there's no word, no prophetic word, and there isn't vision in the in the earth. And this is one of them. It, it says in the in 1 Samuel that the word of the Lord was rare and there were not many visions. And then Samuel is born, and then Samuel anoints a king. The second time we see this atmosphere in the earth is between the two covenants. We see this quiet period of over 400 years, and there's no prophetic witness. There's no revelation in the earth. And then God anoints, or God uh, touches a barren woman, Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mother, and out of her comes a prophetic voice that anoints a king. So we see here, there's a pattern that we're following, that there's a, there's a Kairos moment. And usually Kairos moments are preceded by dark moments. 
Usually Kairos, how many people can hear what I'm saying right now? I believe the last four years was a dark moment that seemed quiet where the word of the Lord was hard to discern, but we're moving into a Kairos moment. And every time God shifts things, he finds a barren womb that he can bring life out of and a revelation out of it. So God, whenever God wants to do something new, he finds a barren womb, brings a prophetic voice that then anoints a, a government or, or a kingly generation. So think about this in your life, that God loves to find the places that look like death, that look like barrenness, that look like loss. And he likes to go in there and he likes to plant the seed of a prophetic promise. And when that seed is, is germinated and that seed is gestated, when that seed is just ready to come, there's a Kairos moment. And then when that thing comes to a place of fulfillment, it brings a new measure of the kingdom of God in your life. Does anybody understand what I'm saying today? That God is taking a season that looked like blackness and barrenness, darkness and uh, discord, and he's bringing a clear word at a Kairos moment that's going to bring the government of God in your life. So we see about Samuel that he comes at this specific moment in time. And it says in, in the second chapter of 1 Samuel, it says that the child Samuel grew in stature and favor with God and man. Who else do we see in the Bible that's talked about this way? It's, it's the process of growth to when you come to a, a, a Kairos moment. So Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, and favor with God and man. So the developmental process of your promise. So this becomes one of the 12 Kairos moments. I believe we're in a Kairos moment right now. And there's two things that, that we need to exercise or two things that come into play during these moments. And in the kingdom of God, things happen by hunger and by faith. They happen by hunger and faith. I remember watching a, um, a movie about uh, financial people uh, a couple weeks ago, and there was a statement made that a major financial mover and shaker in the world said that the market is moved by either greed or fear. And whenever other people get fearful, I get greedy. But when other people get greedy, I get fearful. Now, fear and greed aren't, don't sound like kingdom values, and they're not, but everything that's a kingdom value has a shadow, right? So the kingdom value is hunger, not greed, and faith, or we could say, use the word risk. So when the world around us gets fearful, what do we get? We get, we take risk. We, there's an opportunity. And sometimes miss the, people miss the opportunity because of two things. Either they don't have a hunger for it, or they don't take the risk to enter into it. Every time that I saw, I've seen God move in my life in a miraculous way, it's because I became hungry for something. And hunger is always birthed out of emptiness. So again, we come back to God takes moment of emptiness. He creates a hunger. And then he gives us an opportunity to take a risk. I believe those are the three things that, that God wants to do. He wants to teach you how to recognize a Kairos moment, how to get hungry for what you don't have, and how to exercise faith to take hold of what God's about to give you. And I want to show you three things that we learn about how to recognize a Kairos moment. Are you ready? Three ways to recognize a Kairos moment. Let's take a look at Samuel's process here before he anoints David as king. In 1 Samuel 16, at the first verse, now we talked about him standing before Eli Eliab, right? And by the way, it says about Samuel uh, in his development in 1 Samuel 3.19, that so Samuel grew and the Lord was with him, and the Lord let none of his words fall to the ground. That's not said about any other prophetic witness in Scripture. It said about Samuel that the Lord let none of his words fall to the ground. For me, that's a picture of prophetic maturity. Samuel grew in wisdom, stature, in favor with God and man, and he grew so much that God let none of his words fall to the ground. Isn't that 
Is that encouraging right there? There's a promise you could take right there that God is not going to let any of your promises fall to the ground and that it's possible for you to walk with him in such a way that he'll honor the words that you speak because your words become your his words when your heart has become his heart. So it's been one of my secret prayers that I pray, Lord, let none of my words fall to the ground. Now, if you take that statement and you put it in the context now, the picture of Samuel standing before Eliab and Samuel says in his heart, surely this is the Lord's anointed. We see a, a prophet with a perfect track record come to nearly the end of his life and almost miss it. His words almost fell to the ground. But God stopped him and God helped him and grace was there. So I want to show you how important this Kairos moment was. I remember reading the scripture uh, many years ago, over 20 years ago, and it was actually a Kairos moment in my life that I'm going to tell you about. I was, it was the last time I was on staff at a church and it, um, any of you who have been around organizations or church or family, you know that with relationships come opportunities for joy and pain. And this, this experience ended up a painful experience for me, but it was a growth experience that God invited me into. And I was um, on this staff of this church and the senior pastor had stepped down and the board of the church had asked me to take over the church or consider taking over the church. And I said, I know I'm called to go to the nations and the body of Christ at large. Thank you for the opportunity, but I want to serve you until you find a new leader. And what happened was that um, this board moved in certain ways that uh, started to, to remove people from positions and they actually were moving to remove me from a position and it became very painful for me. And this ended in a very painful experience for me because when, when something turns out different than you expect it, you go through times of mourning. And this is where Sam, Samuel was in 1 Samuel 16, 1. It says, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? See, I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Now fill your horn with oil. See, I am sending you to Jesse, to the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. So let me stop you right there. Because Samuel almost missed it. He almost missed an opportunity. And it was because of the pain of how his last opportunity came about. I had to make a choice that whenever something didn't end the way I thought it would end or didn't succeed the way I thought it would succeed, that I was going to still believe that God was with me, that his words would still come to pass, that I still has, had his anointing, that I still had his favor. And this is what Samuel was dealing with. I believe that Samuel almost anointed the wrong opportunity. He almost anointed the wrong assignment. He almost moved into the wrong situation because he hadn't gotten over the pain of the last situation. And I believe that God wants to remove from you the pain of the last season so that you can move into the promise of the next season. And Saul, one of his characteristics was that he was taller than all in his tribe. He was tall. And what was Eliab's characteristic? He was taller than his brothers. And, and see, God was saying, you're, if you don't get over the pain of the loss you experience, if you don't get over the pain of the disappointment, you're going to go back into the same thing. So there's three things that we can learn from this story that help you to recognize a Kairos moment. Number one is in this statement, stop mourning for Saul. You need to recognize when an assignment is over. Now I'm gonna define assignment as an opportunity, um, a, a, a relationship, a, a, a job even. You, you have to recognize when an assignment was over. Samuel had an assignment to Saul, 
that if he didn't finish it well, he wouldn't be able to see the next Kairos moment. And that was David that was coming. God said, stop mourning for Saul. Now, how do we know? How do we know? I mean, we know that there are stages of grief, but I think we need to make this more practical. I was sitting with a leader just a few weeks ago, and, and he was talking to me about the painful experience of a previous assignment and how he stayed too long and how he ended up hurting people and he ended up getting hurt. And, and we talked about this and he said, how could I have seen when the assignment was over when I didn't know it was over? And I thought about that and I thought about this scripture. And here's how I think we can understand whenever we can cross over from a last season. I believe the last four years has been a threshold moment. And I believe now we're entering into a Kairos moment where we're not just in transition, but we're entering fully into the new. And the three things that I think you need to ask yourself when you're asking, is this assignment over is, is this situation or is this assignment developing me? Am I still developing? You know, every assignment that I had at, at a job, um, at a career, at a church, or even, even seasons of ministry, they were moments that were supposed to develop me. Now, I actually believe there are times when God has us stay somewhere longer than that place can to develop us because that's the definition of servanthood. So I, I think that one of the things we have to recognize is how we're being developed by our current assignment. And if we've developed them better, the most we can, then we're there to serve, not to size up, right? The second thing is, if you are no longer able to be an influence of that person, this is where, this is where Samuel, came to his lid, right? Samuel grew in wisdom, stature, and favor with God and man. Samuel grew to a place that none of his words fell to the ground, but Samuel couldn't develop Saul anymore. Samuel still believed that he had the assignment and the responsibility for Saul's choices and Saul, Saul's decisions. But let me tell you something, that when you stay in an assignment, farther than that assignment develops you, that's servanthood. When you stay in an assignment farther than you can develop that or influence that situation, now you're moving into, I won't call it slavery. You're, you're moving into a place of not working from identity, but trying to change something that doesn't want to change. I can't change. And God said to, Saul, to, Saul, uh, to Samuel, stop mourning for Saul. And I want to just declare to you that you have been given an opportunity to develop. And when you recognize that now God is giving you another opportunity to influence, you'll recognize and you'll be able to recognize when an assignment is over. And if you're still developing and you're still influencing, then you still have an assignment. The third thing that we see from this is that when you recognize an assignment is becoming harmful when it's, it's actually diminishing you, it's actually not helping you grow. You're not being changed into his image and likeness. You're not honoring God in it. And God actually had to say to Samuel, stop mourning. And the second thing he said is, fill your horn with oil. I love this because God doesn't just leave, a, leave Samuel with a, a dead end. He makes a declaration for the future. And I want to tell you that no matter what you've been through, this isn't a dead end. God has already declared that you have a future and a hope. God is making a declaration tonight. What is he saying? Fill your horn with oil. This is, this is the second thing what, that we need to recognize a Kairos moment is to, I believe what God was saying to Samuel, recover your passion and your purpose. Recover your passion and your purpose. Go back, it was, it's in Revelation 2, it says, go back to your first love. Fill your horn with oil. Why is this important? Because this is where Samuel started. This is where he started his prophetic ministry. When he, when he was in the temple, where did Samuel sleep? He slept by the Holy of Holies, where the lamp of God was. It, it says it in 
1 Samuel chapter 3. And it came to pass that while Eli, the high priest, was laying down in his place, and his eyes had begun to grow so dim he could not see. That is a, a sign of a, a leader that has lost his vision, a movement that, that doesn't have a oil anymore, right? A, a, a situation where they didn't couldn't see. So Eli, his eyes has begun to grow dim. I, I want to just pause right here and say, I know many of you have been in situations where the thing that was giving you vision for the future had had was growing dim. Its eyes were growing dim. The the movement maybe that gave you the passion that you had for the things of the kingdom was the fire was burning out. And that's this is the picture of what was saying that the lamp of God was going out in the tabernacle of the Lord. So there was two things that were happening that Sam were developing Samuel is that the prophetic vision was becoming dim and the prophetic lamp was going out. And this is where Samuel was lying down. And this is where Samuel started to hear God's voice. Now I should give you some context for why God is saying to Samuel, fill your horn with oil, because he came from a place where the prophetic voice that was present in his generation was losing vision, where the prophetic movement that was around him in the temple, the light, the lamp was going out. But he was saying, you represent a new generation, and I want you to fill your horn with oil. This was the oil that, that lit the lampstand in the temple of God that was supposed to burn 24-7. So Samuel knew exactly what this meant. This meant go back to the place where you first encountered me and find out how to get your passion back. Go back to the place where you first heard my voice and find out what I'm saying now. Is this speaking to anyone right now? If you don't know what God is saying for the future, go back to the last place you heard it. Maybe it's not geographically. Go back to, go back to the faith. Go back to journaling again. Go back to worshiping again. Go back to singing to him in your car at the top of your voice. Go back to some of the old word song playlists that built faith in you. Go back to some of your old prophetic words and, and, and declare them out. You know, I had a dream just a couple of weeks ago for a prophetic friend of mine, a, a well-known minister, and I, I had this dream. And it was a two-part dream, but I knew it was for him, but it, it, it felt like it was also speaking to me. And he had gone through some physical problems over the last several years. And he told me, I just got a call from the doctor and my medical report is completely um, healthy. But they also told me that I'm going to be the rainbow prophet and all of my promises are going to come to pass. And I, and, I, and I remember texting my friend and said, I had this great dream for you and you're, you're not going to have this health problem anymore, but there's promises that are still unfulfilled in your life that are going to come to pass. And he, he texted me back so happy that he really needed to have that at that moment, that what he had been through physically over the last couple of years had actually taken his attention away from actually going after unfulfilled promises. And he was just dealing with physical problems. He didn't look at his promise, his prophetic promises. And so I wanna tell you that God is even giving you a promise tonight that the things that have wearied you in this last season, God is lifting off of you. And I declare this is a, a rainbow prophecy year. This is a year where all your promises will come to pass. Like you're, you should believe. So. Samuel needed to go back to get the oil. Where do you go back to get the oil? That's the question you need to ask God. Where do you need to fill your horn with oil? Do you just go back in your mind and think about those encounters? Do you go back to promises and rehearse them back to God? But how are you going to fill your horn with oil? Someone needs to say tonight, I'm going to fill my horn with oil, right? Put it in the chat, but put it on your paper and say, where am I going to go back? Where did Samuel have to go? He had to go back to the temple, back to the place where the vision was waning and the fire was dying, and he had to get that oil. And that's the oil that God's going to use to anoint your new season, is the oil that he gave you in a previous season. Come on, somebody. That's a good word right there. 
The third statement that God makes, here's, remember what he said, how long will you mourn for Saul, fill your horn with oil, for I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. Stop right there. Stop right there. He didn't say, I provided for you a king. I provided for Israel a king. He said, I provided for myself a king. So this is the third thing. First of all, we got to recognize when the assignments was over. Second, recover your original passion and purpose. And third, receive what God has already provided for himself. That's for you. Receive what God has already provided. There are things that God has already provided that you haven't grabbed hold of. Back to my story, okay? I knew I needed a car. I knew I needed a job. What was that? That was hunger. Because hunger, something that I lacked, told me what I needed. And sometimes you go after healing when you get sick. You go after, you know, a new spiritual community when you get hurt. You go after financial breakthrough when you know you get broke. Whatever it, whatever it is that you go after that's part of the kingdom. You, you usually do it when you get hungry for it. But there's another thing that's available that can only come. It doesn't come from hunger. It comes from risk. It comes from risk. It comes from not greed and, and fear, but it comes from faith. All right. It comes from risk and faith. John Wimber always said is spelled R-I-S-K. So it, it's, there are some things that are available for you. You won't discover till you take a risk. So you go to the, you know, the finance, you're called to the bursar's office and, and they, they say, you need to apply. You need to apply for this scholarship. You need to apply for this grant that's available. It's available, but you have to go after it. And there are things that God has available for you that you have to go after in this next season. What are they? You have to ask yourself, what is it that God has provided? Receive what God has already provided. This reminds me a lot of Abraham and his son, Isaac, and how he took him to the top of the mountain. And God had promised Abraham that he would be a father. And he was carrying that promise, that fulfilled promise. And God said, I want you to take your son. I want you to offer him to me and I'll make you the father of many nations. And this Isaac asked Abraham on the way up the mountain, father, where is the sacrificial lamb? Where is the sacrifice? And Abraham said something that is a faith statement that we need in this next season. When other people are filled with fear, we get faith filled. When other people are filled with fear, we get faith filled. We're not we're operating by the values of this world system of, of fear and greed, right? We're operating by the values of the kingdom, hunger and faith, hunger and faith. And I want to tell you, there's some things that you went after because you were hungry. But I believe the next things that God wants to give you, you have to go over because it's going gonna, it's gonna to require a risk. And this was a risk for Abraham. And he said, son, God has already provided for himself a lamb. God has already provided for himself a lamb. Now, you know exactly what we're talking about now. We're talking about Jesus, right? I've already provided for myself a king. I've already provided for myself a sacrifice. I've already provided for myself a lamb. This is where, you know, I just, I just give the altar call now because this is a salvation call. But this is a call to recognize what God has available for you in this next season. What has God already provided for you? What is it? Is it a job that you need? Is it a car that you need? Is it a grant that you need? Is it a house that you need? Is it a healing that you need? Is it, a, is it a new community that you need? God has already provided for himself. And what do you have to do? You had to do what, Sam, what Samuel did in this case. In this case, Samuel had to take a risk. And his risk was he was in Jesse's house 
and he went down the line and each one he stood before that was not the Lord's anointed. But I love what happens at the end of this chapter in 2 Samuel 16, that he, he looks at Jesse and says, is there another one? Is there another one? And so look, listen to this. So, so therefore, here's what Saul said that then Saul sent to Jesse saying, please let David stand before me for he found favor in my sight. And it was that when the spirit from God was upon Saul that David would play his harp and play it in his hand and Saul would be refreshed and well from the distressing of, distressing of his spirit. So Samuel anointed David. He sent and he brought David and he said he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, arise and anoint him for this is the one. And Samuel took his horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brother. And from that moment, the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day, from that day. And that same anointing oil that Samuel had to go back to his dark period, that Samuel had to go back to his dry period, and he had to find it. He found it out of hunger, then he had to find it out of risk. And he brought that back, and that was the anointing oil that broke the curse off, of, that broke the spirit off of Saul, that broke Israel free from a rebellious spirit, and that anointed a new season. It was the Kairos moment. But that Kairos moment, didn't come until Samuel had to stop mourning for Saul. He had to fill his horn with oil and he had to go and he had to take a risk. He had to recognize what God had already provided. And he had to recognize it after recognizing what wasn't anointed. That's the risk of this next season. That's the opportunity of this next season. And here's what I think you should ask for yourself right now is, which of these three things is it that God's telling me to do? Is, it, is he telling you to stop mourning for Saul? Is he telling you, go back and find your oil? Or is he telling you, it's time for you to take a risk, to discover what I've already made available for you? And that's my prayer for you in this lesson, is that you would sit down with God and you would ask God, which of these three things do you want me to do? Or maybe it's all three. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask right now about that by your spirit that you would give us the faith that if you could take a barren womb like Hannah and bring out a prophetic voice that would anoint a king, that you can take the barren and broken moments in our life and make them the places that beautiful things come out of. And God, if you can let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground, that you can create an opportunity where every promise in our life is fulfilled. And Father, if you can take a moment, a Kairos moment in the life of Israel, in the life of Samuel, and you could find an anointing that would break the yoke, I pray that you would do that for each person listening. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to give you an opportunity for a couple things tonight. Just a moment, I want, to, I want to pray for some of you. But first of all, put it in the chat. Which one is God telling you to do? Which one is he telling you to do? Is it stop mourning for the past? Is it fill your oil, fill your oil up, or is it find the thing that God has already provided for you? That's what I want you to ask tonight. And as you do that, I want to share with you an opportunity to join me for the next eight weeks. So I'm doing a brand new class called Understanding Dreams and Visions. And I believe it's a great opportunity for us to join together. So I want to invite you to join us for the next eight weeks. We're going to look at dream language in the Bible. We're going to look at dreams in the Bible. We're going to help you unlock some of the things that God's speaking to you. And I share with you a dream, a couple of dreams that I've had recently and, and what they meant and how God can speak to you in dreams. So go to ascendacademy.net, uh, ascendacademy.net, and you can sign up for the next eight weeks. It's going to be a great time. In fact, what I'll do for you guys is I'll put that in the chat as well.
so you can see where to go for that. And I'll put that in the YouTube link for you that are watching my YouTube as well. All right. All right. Bless you guys. Let's do some ministry time. Every promise fulfilled. I love this. I love these takeaways tonight. Fill the oil. Find what God has already provided. Amen. 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 Good stuff tonight. Um, I want to speak to um, Cynthia tonight. I, 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 when I saw your name, Cynthia, I heard the Lord say, make a joyful noise to the Lord. I feel like that God is going to bring you into a season of time where you choose to um, praise instead of have a, a spirit of heaviness. This is gonna be an Isaiah 61 year where, where God says, I'm giving you a garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness. And there's an oil of joy from mourning that's coming in your life. But I also felt like this has to do with um, the uh, sound of family sounds of music that are gonna bring generational freedom in your family. And I feel like God is teaching you things about generational freedom where uh, there have even been generational patterns that God wants to break and turn them into generational blessings and generational curses that God is going to turn into generational joy. And so we just bless you, Cynthia, that today is a day where God is giving you the oil of joy for mourning, a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, an Isaiah 61 year that you will see um, fulfillment. Um, Marina, I felt like when I saw your name that God said that, that he is going to use you uh, to proclaim freedom to captives. And I felt like God um, was putting a key in your hand. And it was a specific key. It was a very interesting looking key. It had like a heart on one side and then it had a flame on the other side. And I feel like it's the key to... Um, healing people's hearts so that they actually will get on fire for God and be free. Uh, I, I felt like God was going to give you an inner healing ministry that was going to help people to overcome um, areas of brokenness of their life, even that brought them into bondages um, physically, emotionally, and relationally. And so, uh, Marina, I felt like this is a year where God is going to use you to set captives free, where there are going to be people that have been bound up um, emotionally that are going to get emo emotional freedom. And also, I felt like there are um, visitations that are coming in the night season for you where uh, even dreams that have become disruptive and possibly demonic are going to become dreams filled with God's um, destiny and filled with hope. And, and I felt like God is releasing new dreams in the night season to you that are going to begin to even share with you some of the things that God wants to do in the future. So we bless you with that uh, in Jesus' name. Tawanda, uh, when I looked down I saw and saw your name, I, I felt like the Lord said that your voice is going to open up the heavens. And, and I felt like God was going to use the sound of your voice to create an uh, atmosphere of open heavens and that when the heavens opened, healing came into people's lives. And I felt like there is a healing gift in you, um, both a natural and a spiritual healing gift that God is releasing in you that you're going to see even, uh, particularly I felt like the Lord says, I'm healing blood disorders and I'm going to heal blood. I'm going to heal um, even things that are incurable in blood systems. And so, Lord, we just speak the blood of Jesus right now tonight over Tawanda. Uh, we speak the blood of Jesus over blood issues, over things that are even incurable, that the blood of Jesus speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. In Jesus' name, we just bless you. We have great agreement here in the, in the chat for you. So we just bless you. Um, in Jesus name. Yeah, just let the spirit, I felt the spirit of God on me, feel the spirit of God. So I feel faith. I feel a lot of faith in the atmosphere tonight. I believe we're going to have testimonies of promises fulfilled. I feel, I, 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 don't, I don't tell stories about um, financial provision 
or physical provision that often. But tonight, I felt like I was supposed to tell some of these stories because I really feel like there are people that even need new jobs and new cars, that new jobs and new transportation are coming your way. So Lord, and I think, why is that important? Well, I believe it's part of the promises of God. God said, I will bless the work of your hands. And so providing jobs so that God can bless us is part of God's promises in our life. Jesus even needed transportation. He told him, tell them I, the master has need of that mule. So uh, we just declare right now, if you're in need of a job or a car, just you know, put that in the chat. That's me. Put your hand up. Lord, we agree right now. I'm asking you, God, to do miracles for jobs and transportation that 2025 will be the year of exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask or think. A lot of people need this tonight. So we're going to just going to agree right now, God, I thank you for opportune moments, for Kairos moments. And I pray for risk. And I feel like there's even someone just watching this that you've been even thinking about, like, I need to give my, my notice at my job. God's got something else for me. And I just, I just declare right now that you're not going to mourn for Saul. You're not going to mourn for, for what you lost or what, what, what was in the last season that didn't come out the way you expected it. Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you that it's okay to feel that pain, that to, to even understand that they mourned it because it meant something to them that it, it, it caused them pain because they cared about it. But God, I thank you right now in Jesus' name that you're saying it's time to fill up your oil and it's time to find your new opportunity. Yeah, in Jesus' name, a lot of people, a lot of people. So Lord, we just bless them. In Jesus' name, I feel that faith. And I feel like, um, God, I thank you. Yeah, I will tell this. So I started with that story about, you know, a, a church that I was part of. It it, it, it became, ended very painful for me, and, and it even cost me financially. I, I, I There was a period of time that I was out of work. It was many, many years ago, but I, I still feel the pain of it. And I had a van that I was leasing, and I had to turn in that van and buy it. I actually had someone off, like I had to borrow someone's vehicle for, for a while in my life. It was a very difficult time. So I just want to tell you that, that there were breakthrough moments that happen, but sometimes you're, you're in that barrenness and you can't feel it. But I want to tell you, I know what it's like, and, and I know many of you have experienced things like this. So don't let your barrenness get you stuck when God has a breakthrough available for you. And so I even just declare that miracles for, for vehicles that are necessary, even if you need ve uh, some sort of vehicles for your, for your job, for your, for your career, Lord, we just bless you. We thank you, God, that you love to daily load us down with benefits. That's one of the things that you love to do. So, Lord, we just thank you for those blessings. I just felt like we were supposed to really, really believe. And and I also want to just encourage you guys, if you um, would continue to partner with us in prayer, um, but one of the things that we've been able to do in this last year, this last two years, like I've been wanting to give you guys a little bit of update, but I want to tell you that these last couple of years of ministry have been so incredible. The Lord has taken me to over 20 nations in the last two years. And particularly in this last year, there have been nations that have opened up that I, I never thought I would go to and opportunities to stand before people in political office, in places of influence, as well as to serve the poor like I never have before. So I just want to thank you for those of you that have been faithful in your prayer for me and even with your support financially of this ministry that there is a blessing that I'm praying for you every single day and I believe that 2025 will be the greatest year that this ministry has ever seen. We've been able to reach over 40 nations. We've been able to see thousands and thousands of people come to Christ, many people healed and prophetic promises come to pass but the greatest days are still ahead and they are for you as well. So my prayer for you is that God fulfills every promise 
and that none of your words fall to the ground in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. Have an amazing December, a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. We'll see you in January back here and sign up for the email so you can keep in touch with everything we're doing. If you want to sow the end of the year, we would be so grateful for you to partner with us financially. We love you guys. Have a great night.